Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team. Welcome back. We're going to talk about some free agency. About, a, I don't know, a handful of guys that I think might be worth a look. This is not going to be the 60 person video where we just go through all of them. Because I don't think that makes sense for this Bruins team this offseason. I do want you to put below any guy you're interested in that we don't talk about tonight, because I'll be making more of these before July 1st. You can bet your biscuit. But I'm going to talk about how we can get him. You want Pierre-Luc Dubois? Easy. It was not easy. You want Dmitry Orlov? Piece of cake! The cake is red velvet. You have to bake it from scratch using nothing but a spoon and three lighters duct taped together. You want Timo Meyer? Lower your fucking expectations, okay? I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Seriously. Stop. Stop. No, it's not rude. No, it's not. It's unrealistic. Mom! The goal here today is to take a look at this team as is right now and do our best to fill it out as competitively as possible without making any trades that are super unrealistic or any deals that are super unrealistic. Are you going to agree with everything I say and the value of each player? Absolutely not. But I will not have some sort of move that has Forbort get, getting traded for a third rounder. Like, that's that's not going to happen. I am omitting a couple names that everyone's going to want. Patrick Kane. I don't want to touch that. Not even close. Ryan O'Reilly does nothing for this team right now. We need to get younger. Uh, Vladimir Tarasenko, he's not coming here. Van Riemsdyk would be fun. Money's way too much. Doesn't make sense for a winger. Klingberg. I don't I don't even know why you'd bring him up, honestly. Meyer, obviously too much money. And same with Debrinkat. Way too much money. Guys that are, we just, we love, love to have more wings. Don't get me wrong. We need down the middle. That's where we're going to focus. You got to start somewhere, though. And the first place you got to start is clearing out some money. So let's jump over to Cap Friendly. Here's the current squad. We're going to make quick changes where I am going to buy out Mike Riley. I am going to trade Derek Forbort for a six-round pick with the Panthers. And I'm going to move a couple guys into the lineup. And we're going to see what we're left to. I'm fast-forwarding through this because two video videos, I basically did the same exact thing. So we're just going to skip ahead. And just like that, we have $7.9 million in cap space, needing a second-line center, a third-line right wing, a fourth-line left wing, and then a third right defenseman. Now, of course, that is excluding signing guys that are RFAs. This is about to get a little bit squirrely how we're going to approach this. But I'm not going to re-sign them right this second. I am going to show you how we can bring players in. And sometimes that means keeping Swayman and Frederick. Sometimes it means not keeping Swayman and Frederick. Okay? The first guy I actually want to talk about, and one of the most interesting ones to me, is Max Pacioretty. I know. The odds aren't great. He is in my unlikely category. He is coming off of two ACL tears. Last year, he had three goals in five games. In that fifth game, a non-contact injury tore his ACL again. Is he ever going to play again? Is he going to be ready to play again next season? Who knows? But here's what I find kind of fun about it. Not the injury, obviously. If... You wanted to bring in Max Pacioretty. His deal is going to be somewhere in the $2 million range. I just can't imagine a team paying more than that for a guy who's coming off of two ACLs. It's going to be a one-year, $2 million deal, maybe 2.5. I don't think I'm being crazy here. And would he choose the Bruins? Would he see the Bruins as a good landing spot to rebuild his value? Maybe play an opposite wing of DeBrusque or maybe Pasternak? I don't know. Let's see what it looks like, though, shall we? I mean, seriously, who's mad at that? Who's actually mad at that? Patches for $2 million on the left wing. Maybe maybe swap him and Hall, huh? Either way, you're kind of like, okay, I don't hate that. <laughs> is it Someone out there is going to be like, he's going to get 4 or 5, 4.5 from a, from a team. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. You could keep him there right now. I, I'm just going to leave him there. I'm not going to undo that trade right now. That's fun to me. Is it likely? Absolutely not. But it is a fun conversation. The other super unlikely guy is Pierre-Luc Dubois. And let's not even talk about the $9 million that has been referenced for him. Uh-uh. Let's talk about a more realistic $7.5 million. All right? 
here's the issue I'm having with him. He's an RFA, whatever. That doesn't really mean anything to us because we could we could do a, really a sign and trade with Winnipeg. They do a 7.5 for eight years, trade him to us. Who's going back the other way? Honestly. They don't need Swayman. They have Hellebuck. They're not that interested in Swayman. Frederick barely moves the needle. Lee sells part of the package. Do we have a first? Yeah, in 2025. Are we really going to give up a first for two years down the road when we might be bottoming out at that point? Not that I believe we will be, but we do not know what the future holds for this squad. If we trade that first, we're in trouble. We're in trouble as it is. I don't see it happening. Pierre-Luc Dubois doesn't make sense, but financially, you want to make it work? Taylor Hall, he's gone. He's gone. Because again, we're just trying to put together a team here. Even if we don't sign patches, you can't spend all $7.5 million on one position when you have three, four more to fill. Actually, no, three. I'm going to take, I'm going to take our friend Boosie down here. Where's Boosie? Where is he? Where's... Where's my Boosie boy? Okay, I had a I had a bit of a panic attack. I uh, forgot we hadn't re-signed Boosie yet, so we're just gonna jump over here and we're gonna give him the old I don't know, give him eight two five or something. I don't know. Two years, sure, whatever. Boom, he's in there. All right. You can't spend all seven point five. So even with with patches, if you were to not sign him, you don't have really the space to be in to bring in Pierre Luc Dubois. So here's what we're gonna do with Taylor Hall. We are gonna trade him. I'm gonna back down here. We're gonna trade him to the Canes. Mm-hmm. They're interested. They are interested. We're getting patches. We might as well, you know, send him off. So. What do the Canes get out of this deal? Well, they get Taylor Hall. But although I don't believe some of the talk about how he is overpaid, we are going to retain a little on him. Uh, I do think that's necessary because if we're going to actually get any value out of it, I think that's something that needs to happen. So we are going to retain $1.5 million on him from... The Canes, we are going to get Philly's third round pick, and we are going to get their sixth round pick, and we are going to get the rights to, you guessed it, Poyarvi. Where is it? There he is. Boom. Submit trade. Boom. And in return, Poyarvi is going to sign a $1.4 million one year contract just to try to get his value up. He had two points in 17 games and was scratched for any important games down the stretch. He is actually a pretty decent hockey player who can't finish to save his life. There's a lot wrong with his game right now. Do I think this is a ridiculous signing? Yes. But I kind of, if we're going to have a fun next year, let's do it. Taylor Hall, gone. We're up to 8.2, back up to 8.2 in cap space. Poyarvi, welcome to the team. You are now on Coil's right. Congratulations. You'll notice I'm sort of building something here. But the Pierre-Luc Dubois thing, I'm not even going to put on paper. And I can't. I really can't in good consciousness-ness-ness-ness. 7.5 million, sign and trade, eight-year contract. Sure, sure, right? I would honestly pay Pierre-Luc Dubois that. I would. The trade doesn't come together. Liesel and Lorai, I think, is the only way you even get that conversation started. And how many of you are willing to do that right now with the shape the team's in right now? I just... I just don't see it. Lee Sell in a first? Are we really going to trade that 2025 first? For Pierre-Luc Dubois, who's going to be like a really good second-line center? Is he a first-line center? I don't I don't really think so. I, he's, the dude's talented. He's really good. I just don't see this team making that kind of push. So let's say it's Lee Sell. And let's say it's a third this year. Our third this year, because why have draft picks at all, really? Let's say Frederick goes. The rights assigned Frederick go. Um, shoot. Shoot. Throw in that 2025 first. Really do. Are we still winning the trade battle to get this guy over other desperate teams? No. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. We would have to give up an exorbitant amount for a guy that we aren't 100% we love. 
I just don't see it happening. So right now, we're not bringing him in. We could. You move Taylor Hall, and you just really start squeezing pennies elsewhere, you can bring him in. You have to give up everything. Grizzly, what about that? What about instead of 2025 uh, the first, you have Grizz, Freddy, you have Lee Sell, you have Beecher. You, like, you just throw in a bunch of young guys and just hope for the best. Just doesn't make sense to me. You know who else doesn't make sense? Orlov. 17 points in 23 games with us. But the money just isn't going to work for a complete luxury of a player. Your top four right now is Grizz, debatably, right? People are saying that he might get moved. We'll see. But Grizz, McAvoy, Lindholm, Carlo. That's a really good top four. That's a really good top four. I would love to add Orlov to that. Orlov instead of Grizz, fine, right? You trade Grizz, you bring Orlov in. But again, Orlov's looking for a five-year, five million-plus contract aging out defensemen. I don't, I don't see them doing that. I really don't. You add in the fact that Orlov has talked about going back to Washington and it just, it doesn't feel like either side is really going to meet in the middle on this one. It's just not going to work. But for a luxury, remember, he would be a luxury. He would not be a necessity, simply put. You know, it does kind of interest me though. Kevin Shattenkirk, it's a tough pull. 34 years old, uh, had 27 points in 75 games on a really bad team. You would expect that the market on him doesn't go cold. But if it did, and no one's looking to commit to a 34-year-old defenseman, and he starts looking around and going, all right, well, who can I kind of jump on to maybe make a run at this? And if he sees us and goes, I don't know, a year deal at $2 million? Maybe get some easy points with that offense in front of me, boost my value. Does it make a lot of sense? Probably not. But he's a guy I am looking at and kind of trying to gauge the market for who wants him. And if he kind of falls through the cracks, I'd be surprised if they weren't trying to plug him into the third pair and spend a couple million on him for a year or two. I don't think it's a terrible idea. Is it likely? No. He's still listed as one of my unlikely guys. But let's talk about some more likely guys. Like Nolan Patrick. Wait, 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 wait. Don't turn the video off. That's not fair. That's not fair. You got to let me explain first. Nolan Patrick might never play again. Maybe that's kind of the theme of this with Patch Ready too. I should talk about Landis Gog. This is sad. I'm bumming myself out. Nolan Patrick has been through a lot. But if he was looking for a, just a role on a team, bottom six guy, who's just trying to get back to his game. I mean, you could do a lot worse than the Boston Bruins. Do I want to have another cautious situation where I'm worried about the player every time he touches the ice? Not really. But you're talking about another really cheap contract for a player who, when they can play, is a pretty damn good hockey player. I think you make a call. You know who else checks boxes? Tyler Bertuzzi! 30 points in 50 games played, showed offensive chemistry with the boys, and then obviously had some defensive woes in the playoffs. But can we make it work? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's let's jump over here. All I'm saying is it kind of works. It kind of works. Now, look, you just traded Taylor Hall for Tyler Bertuzzi. I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. Yes, Bertuzzi's younger. But you're still not going to sign him to an eight-year deal. I don't think so, at least. Not with the way he plays the game. Ah, uh, do I make that move personally? No. But a lot of you wanted to see it. That's the way you do it. You have traded Taylor Hall, gotten a little bit of something back, and you signed Bertuzzi to basically Taylor Hall's deal. I put him for four years at six million. Boom. Easy peasy. We got to make more changes, though. Because if we're actually, if we're actually going to have a complete roster, we got to shake it up even further. And we got to go with a guy who the Bruins should genuinely be going after. And a guy that a lot of you have mentioned. And I just think you're all so very smart and beautiful. Very, very beautiful, smart people. 
Good job by you. That's right, Evan Rodriguez for 48 million. Wait, nailed it. I think you can do a lot worse than Rodriguez. 4.8 million over five years. Uh, obviously, that's per year. I think he actually ends up doing a two to three year deal so that when the cap rises, he's up for a new deal and his value may have gone up. But I think you just yeah, I think you just do a lot worse than him at 2C. Is Zaka Rodriguez Coil Beecher an intimidating middle? No. But it's a lot better than the other options right now. I'll tell you that much. Unfortunately, that does put us over the cap. I am gonna leave the hall deal done because it brings in Poyarvi and gives us a little bit of wiggle room. Bertuzzi, I am sorry, buddy, but it's probably just not in the cards, which puts us in a weird spot, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Don't worry, I have the perfect fix. <sighs> Nailed it. I'm going to disappoint you all with the last one, and I should show you my whole face for this. Justin Hall, you could sign him to a one-year or two-year $1.2 million deal. Uh, he had some struggles, had some struggles uh, late in the season with the Leafs. 18 points in 80 games. Bit of a black hole offensively, but strong defender, but did flame out in the playoffs. It's not a perfect solution. I challenge you to find a perfect solution for our third right defenseman. That's who I'm bringing in that we don't have to spend a ton of money on, but prevents us from drawing up younger guys before they're ready. And we simply don't have a lot of defensemen that we like in our system that are ready, ready. Laura, I were hoping, but I'm not ready to force them in the league. So let's take a look at how this really pans out. Is that a perfect squad? Absolutely not. That's weak down the middle, weak on the left side. Right side is fine, I guess. Defensively, studs for the top four. Oh, wait, Grizz, hold on. Whoop, there we go. The third uh, pairing, not great. Your backup goalie never played a game in the NHL. That's not perfect. That's the kind of situation we're in. I want to do a little shuffling here, though. So bear with me. I'll be back in a second. So what's the best team I can put together right now with some realistic moves? Well, it still includes Justin Hall. It does. Jeremy Swayman's gone, though. He had to be traded. Trent Frederick was offer-sheeted by the Anaheim Ducks. The Ducks had to send us a second-round pick. They're gone. Sorry. It's the way it goes. Patch ready, pipe dream. It doesn't actually work out for us. But Evan Rodriguez does sign for $4.8 But he has to move over to the wing. Because we did, after trading Hall and getting that third and sixth round pick, plus the rights of Pogliarvi, we did end up with a 2C. And that is Boone Jenner. The Columbus Blue Jackets need to make some noise next year. They are desperate to do so. And so what do they do? They finally get a guy in net. And that's Jeremy Swayman. Unfortunately, they don't have the cap space just to offer sheet him a crazy offer sheet and grab him. So what they decide is, hey, we'll trade you for his rights with a conversation with Swayman first, knowing they're going to be able to actually sign him. Uh, but they'll trade for the rights. Boone Jenner will come our way. Swayman and a late round pick will go their way. The only reason they're able to do this is because they have 20-year-old Kent Johnson, who looks like an unbelievable stud. Jack Roslovic will probably take two C roles. I bounce between Roslovic and Jenner coming our way, but I think they'd rather keep the younger guy as Boone Jenner, I believe, is almost 31. That feels like the most unrealistic thing I've done in this video, and even then, I don't think it's wild. They clear a little bit of cap space. They don't love losing the guy, but they need a solution in net. And Swayman has showed that he has the consistency to be that guy. If there's players that you'd like to talk about, hit me up in the comments. This video is ridiculously long and needs a ton of editing down. Uh, tell me how dumb I am and how stupid this team is and how dumb this video was and all that good stuff. But I love you guys and I appreciate you hanging around. Go Bees. Go Bees!